Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. In this video, we're going to learn about balanced budget multiplier and GDP equilibrium. Now, you may have remembered we've already learned two types of multiplier so far. Okay, one is the regular multiplier, or also known as the spending multiplier. And in the last video, we've learned about the tax multiplier. Okay, so today we're going to learn about the balanced budget multiplier. So what is this balanced budget multiplier? Now, from the definition, it states that it's basically the ratio of a change in GDP to a change in G that is matched by an equal change in T. Okay, in other words, the balanced budget multiplier is equals to 1. Now, there are several formulas here or equations here that you can uh, try to digest. Okay, first of all, we know from the last topic, MPC plus MPS is 1. One, right so if we rearrange this we'll be able to get 1 minus MPC equals to MPS now this is if you remember what is this yes this is the regular multiplier formula the spending multiplier 1 over MPS is the multiplier this one we just learned in the last video minus MPC over MPS is the tax multiplier so can you see that we're adding them together this is our regular spending multiplier plus the tax multiplier Okay, so since they have the same denominator, we can just combine them. So here, up here as well, we can combine them. So it becomes 1 minus plus minus becomes minus, right? 1 minus MPC. So we put it here as the numerator and MPS is the denominator. Now, since we know 1 minus MPC is MPS, so we can just write it as MPS over MPS, okay, which is equals to 1. So this is basically what the balanced budget multiplier means in equation. But what does the balanced budget multiplier mean in everyday language? Okay, so it's like this. It's if we have a change in G or spending, okay, coupled with a change in T, which is of similar amount, okay, the resulting effect would be the same change in GDP. Okay, that is why the balance, multi, uh, the balance budget multiplier is equals to 1. So let's say if there's a change in G equals to 20 billion, okay, and at the same time there's a change in T also um, worth 20 billion, the change in GDP would also be 20 billion. See? Same amount. Okay, so I think uh, it's best if you look at a, an example to further illustrate this concept. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Say initially, equilibrium GDP is 470 billion. Now this is the case without any government spending and without any taxation, okay? And at the same time, MPC is given as 0 0.75. Now let's say government spending increases by 20 billion and at the same time, taxation also increases by 20 billion. So the question is, what happens to the equilibrium GDP? What is the change in equilibrium GDP? Okay, so this is what we need to do. First things first, we need to calculate what is the resulting multiplier from each of this um, activity, okay? Now, increasing G will bring about the multiplier. So we can actually calculate how much is the multiplier in this situation. Remember, multiplier is 1 over MPS. So we know MPC is 0 0.75, so MPS is 0 0.25. So 1 over 0 0.25, we'll get it as 4. Okay, now this is the T, so the corresponding multiplier would be the tax multiplier, which is minus MPC over MPS. So we know MPC is 0 0.75. You take 0 0.75, divide by 0 0.25, we will get 3. Now, as expected, the tax multiplier will be smaller in amount than the regular multiplier, yeah? Why? Because taxation is an indirect uh, or has an indirect effect on aggregate spending whereas G is a direct uh, or has a direct um, effect on aggregate spending. Okay now let's take a look at this example using the first approach which is the aggregate expenditure and output approach. First things first sketch the Keynesian cross. Right so here we have our real GDP. Okay here would be our aggregate expenditure. Here's the 45 degree line, which is the reference point. And initially, this is our initial uh, aggregate spending, which is C plus IG plus XN. Take note, there's no G here because we have not put in 
you know any of the changes yet okay so first of all the equilibrium GDP is 470 how do I know this it's from the question it's given here all right okay now let's sketch the changes first things first we have an increase in G okay so you know that G is a component of aggregate spending so we can actually show this a direct change so the change is 20 billion okay so right the change here is not shown here yeah this one is the change in real GDP which we want to find out the change in G is actually reflected in the aggregate spending axis so um, you know just take a ruler and just guess okay, from here maybe this entire aggregate expenditure line would go up by um, say here Okay, make sure that your line is parallel. Okay, so this is the new aggregate spending line, C plus IG plus XN plus G. Okay, see? All right, so here would be basically an increase in G by 20 billion. Okay, so you can have an increase. So as you can see, we have a new equilibrium. Okay, so how much is the equilibrium? Okay, I'm taking all these figures from the textbook, so it becomes 550 billion. Okay, so it's the new one. However, this is not the only thing that happened. At the same time, we have an increase in T. So remember, increase in taxation means there's a decrease or a fall in disposable income. So when there's a fall in disposable income, let's write it down here, increase in T by 20 billion, okay, the resulting effect would be a fall in disposable income by 20 billion. Okay, and you know that when there's a change in disposable income, it will affect two things, right? There will be a fall in consumption as well as a fall in savings. So how much would be the change in consumption? Take the MPC, 75% times 20, so you get 15. Okay, what about the change in savings? 25% um, times 20, you'll get 5. So this change in C will be shown here, guys. Okay, so remember just now it goes up by 20 so now you need to show the fall in c by 15 so okay obviously you can't go back to the original line because then it will be 20 so where's 15 maybe somewhere here okay right oh dear okay c plus i g plus x n plus g okay so this will be a fall in consumption by 15 so here we'll have a new equilibrium which is 490 okay so this is the interesting part guys First things first, before it was from 470 to 550, okay, so the change was 80 billion, right? 80. And then from 550, you go back to 490, the change is 60 billion, right? So 80 minus 60 is actually 20. Okay, so in other words, the net effect is 20 billion, which is exactly the same as the changes in the GNT. So this is basically what balanced budget multiplier means. Given an equal change in both GNT it will lead to exactly the same amount of change in the real GDP. Okay, let's now look at this example but using the leakage injection approach. As usual, for the leakage injection approach, we cannot use the Keynesian cross but we will use the leakage injection model. Okay, so here would be our real GDP and here's our, well, leakage and injection. Okay, let's just write it leakage injection for short. Okay, initially, this would be our uh, injection, IG plus X. Okay, remember, no G yet because we haven't shown the changes in G. And initially, our uh, leakage is S plus M. Okay, if you want to remember or how do you want to remember which one goes what, okay, it would be a complement. So the IG, the complementary uh, activity would be savings. For export, it's import, okay? So here, initially, our equilibrium GDP is 470. Okay, just like before, it's 470. Now, first things first, what was the first uh, action just now? The first one was an increase in government spending by 20 billion, right? Okay, so we want to show this here. Because remember, G is a component of spending, and it is also shown in the leakage injection approach because G is an injection. So where would it, sh uh, where would it appear? Here. Okay, so what happens for this line? It will be a parallel shift upwards. So let's say, okay, just take a ruler. Make sure you use a ruler. I don't have one right now at the moment. So IG plus X plus G, see? Okay, so this is shown. So here's basically an increase in G by 20 billion. Okay, so you will have the first 
um, new equilibrium GDP which is 550 but we don't stop there because you must also show the change in T okay, the change in T is also by 20 billion right okay so remember when there's a change in T oops sorry when there's a change in T it will affect both consumption and savings right so the change in savings okay, when there's an increase in T there'll be a fall in savings by 5 billion remember guys how do you get 5 billion you take the MPS 0 0.25 times 20 so you get 5 yeah okay so how do you want to show this now you have to show that the savings curve falls so that would be the savings after tax so the savings after tax would be um, let's see here a bit um, yeah so here's SA plus M okay so it'd be here oops yeah but that one wouldn't be the final uh, final equilibrium because you would also need to show a change in T so how do we show a change in T so this entire SA plus M would have to be increased by how much by 20 here so this is SA or savings after tax plus M plus T okay so this one would be an increase by of T by 20 okay so here we'll have a new equilibrium which is for 90. So just like before, from 470 to 550, the change is 60. But from 550 to 490, the change is, eh, sorry, the change is 80. Just now, from 470 to 550, the change is 80 billion. From 550 to 490, the change is 60 billion. So the net effect would be 20 billion. So again, this is how you show the balanced budget multiplier using leakage injection approach. I repeat again, given an equal change in GNT or if we have a change in government spending and taxation by the same amount that same amount would be the change in real GDP